Hey there friends! Welcome back to our channel where history comes alive. In today's episode, we're stepping into a remarkable yet less talked about event in Malta's history. It's the story of when some brave priests in Malta decided to challenge the powerful order of St. John back in 1775. Imagine a time when ordinary people had the courage to stand up against their rulers. So join me as we travel back over 200 years to this incredible period to uncover the courage and struggles of the Maltese people. Let me set the scene for you. Malta in the 1700s. Whilst the Order of St. John was in charge, life wasn't easy for those who weren't part of the elite. Francisco Jiménez de Tejada became the head of the order after Manuel Pinto da Fonseca. Fonseca was known for his love of luxury and didn't think twice about borrowing money to support his extravagant lifestyle. But the world was changing and the knights were losing their power and wealth. So when Jiménez took over, he found the order's coffers nearly empty. So what do you think his solution was? He started cutting costs. He let go of many officials, reduced salaries, and even cut down public spending. He also disbanded the local militia and introduced a tax on corn imports from Sicily. These measures hit the common people hard. And, well, discontent was brewing. But what really upset the people was Jimenez's ban on hunting rabbits and hares. These animals were a major food source for the locals, and now they were off limits. The knights had overhunted them for sport, and their numbers were quite low. Between the hunting ban, the new tax on corn, and the general feeling that the knights were not treating them well, frustration was mounting. It was in this charged atmosphere that a group of priests, unhappy with the state of affairs, and led by the determined Don Gaetano Mannarino, began secretly planning to overthrow the rulers. The rebellion kicked off on the night of September 8, 1775. This date was significant. It was the anniversary of Malta's victory in the Great Siege of 1565, a time when the knights would be busy with celebrations. Manarino and his fellow priests hoped this would be the perfect moment to catch them off guard Unfortunately, though, not as many rebels showed up as they had expected, but they were joined by a handful of determined locals. Together, they managed to take over key locations like Fort St. Elmo and St. James Cavalier in Valletta. They hoped the directions would inspire a larger uprising among the Maltese people. But sadly, this did not happen. The knights quickly organized their forces and regained control of the forts. The rebellion, which had started with a spark of hope, was crushed within a few days. After the dust settled, the leaders of the rebellion were rounded up and put on trial. Jimenez, the man whose policies had sparked the revolt, didn't live to see its conclusion. He passed away, leaving a legacy of austerity and unrest. Manarino, on the other hand, the mastermind behind the rebellion, was sentenced to life in prison. He spent over two decades behind bars before being released. He lived out his remaining years quietly, passing away at the age of 81 in 1814. Many other rebels faced imprisonment, exile or worse. The three who were executed had their heads displayed on pikes at St. James Cavalier. A grim warning to any who might dare to challenge the order's authority again. Despite its failure, the 1775 rebellion was a clear sign that the order's grip on Malta was weakening. The Maltese people's dissatisfaction was becoming increasingly evident. Fast forward to 13 years later, and everything changed when Napoleon Bonaparte's forces arrived in Malta. The French army swiftly took control, and the centuries-long rule of the Order of St. John came to an abrupt end. 
This marked a turning point in Malta's history, ushering in a new era of change and transformation. This episode in Malta's history is a powerful reminder of the resilience and determination of its people. It's a story of courage, struggle, and the quest for justice, even in the face of overwhelming odds. Stories like this are hidden gems in the tapestry of history, and we're very thrilled to share them with you, especially me. If you're as fascinated by Malta's rich and diverse history as much as we are, please make sure to follow Dark Malta Tours on social media. I am sure you will not be disappointed. When you happen to be in Malta, join one of our walking tours for more captivating tales from this beautiful island's past. I salute all of you, dear listeners. But before I go, please like, share and subscribe as we will soon share more interesting stories which will captivate your hearts.